Hi everyone, thanks for watching this uh, video blog post. This is going to be about an interesting little idea around building an in-text workflow that monitors a particular item and waits for one of a number of fields to actually change. So in this case, you can see we have a list with a title field and then four other fields. These are all just text fields. I'm going to create a new item. Let's do test two and we'll just do one, two, three, and four. And we'll click save. Now, we'll jump into the workflow to see what it will look like. So let's just come over here and we'll go into a new, a new page here. We'll open up the workflow designer and oops, let's create a blank template and let's just do a wait for item update. So our workflow is going to sit and wait for a particular change. Now, if you look at this wait for item update uh, action, you'll notice that it only really lets you check one condition, right? So I could actually say, wait for field one to not equal you know, the previous value or something like that, or maybe get a value and, uh, and compare it. But there's no way for you to be able to do, wait for field one to change or field two or field three, etc. So we're gonna to try to figure out a workaround for this. So I'm going to jump to my workflow that I built out that actually was able to do something like this. First, let's have a look at the variables that we're creating. We have a date time variable called uh, DT latest modify. If you guys have read my blogs before, you'll notice I always give my variables uh, a prefix of the actual uh, type of the variable, just so it makes it easy for me to figure out uh, you know, which ones I'm using throughout the workflow. So DT latest modified is a date time. We have four variables that are text variables that are going to store our current values from those fields and then we have a boolean or a yes no variable and this one is actually set to yes and i'll let you know how i use that in a moment okay let's jump out of here all right so the first thing i do is i've used an action set just because i like to wrap up a little bit of my workflow logic and then be able to do things like this minimize and it kind of hides the initialization stuff from the rest of the actual business logic. So all I'm doing here is each of these variable, these set variable actions, they're setting a particular variable like text field one. And we're doing a lookup on the current item and storing field one in text field one. If I go to the last one of these, it should be text field four and I'm storing, it, uh, storing the current value of field four into the variable called text field four. So now each of my four text variables will store the current values of those fields that I'm interested in. Okay, let's minimize that. Oops. Okay, now I have a loop action. Pop open this action and you'll see I'm actually looking at a vari at my variable called bool continue. And I'm gonna continue looping while that variable is equal to yes. Pretty straightforward, just can stay in that loop forever basically. Okay, now once we go into this loop, we're setting our date time variable to the current value of the field called modified, right? So each uh, list item has that field modified, we're just storing that. So do that as, as late in the workflow as possible, because then what we're doing is we're doing this wait for item update. Now what we're doing is instead of looking at those text fields, we're saying wait until the modified field of the current item does not equal the last time we read it, which means something has changed in this item, right? The item has been modified. So it'll sit there potentially for, you know, a minute until somebody changes it or for weeks or months or forever until somebody actually changes that particular item. Then we have a run if, so we know that something has changed. Let's do a check to see if my text variables, right, so text, you can see text field one does not equal the current item field one. So this will check whether the, the actual field one variable, sorry, field one field has changed. The same with, you see a bunch of or conditions here. We're doing the same check for field two, for field three, or field four. So has any of those, or have any of those fields changed uh, in, that, uh, in that event that's modified that current item? If something has changed, then all we're doing here is we're saying set the Boolean 
uh, will continue variable to no, and that will actually let the workflow know that once we get back to the loop, this condition will not be met, and so it'll jump out of this loop and the rest of the workflow will continue. So let's test this out, make sure it actually works. So you'll see I have no workflow running on this at the moment, so I'll kickstart a workflow. And start. Now it's in progress, and what I'll do is actually jump into the workflow history to see what it looks like, like where are we at at the moment. So you'll see we've done all the initialization of the variables. We've gotten into the loop. We've gotten the uh, current modified date, and now we're sitting on uh, wait for a change to the modify field. So let's jump out of this. I'll close this. Yep, we'll close that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is edit this item, and all I'm going to do is change this and just go change the title field. All right, we'll let that go. Now I'm going to jump back to my workflow progress, and I'm going to refresh this. Notice how we've now gone past the wait for item update. We've now run the run if, which means there was an event that modified the item, and we captured that. And if I expand this out, you'll notice we did not go in here because all we did was change the title field. We did not change any of the other uh, actual real fields. So actually, in effect, we've actually gone back through the loop, gotten the latest modified date again, and now we're sitting in the wait for item update. So let's come back here and we'll make a change. And we'll change this variable. Oops, hello, Brad. And we'll change that one. <laughs> All right, now that we've done that, let's refresh this again. And notice everything is green now. We've, the way for item update captured the modified event. We've done a run if. One of those fields has changed. And we've actually told that Boolean variable set it to no, which means tells the loop to exit out. And if you look up here, this workflow has completed. If I come back to my list, where it said in progress and I refresh this, it now says completed. So you can see how easy it was to really build out this particular workflow to capture any type of field that has changed. Now, of course, it does get more and more complex as you start building out more fields that you want to capture. In that scenario, you may want to do something different, which is, uh, uh, there's another blog post that I have that actually finds out what field has changed in a particular item. Uh, so that's something else you might want to look at. But I think once you start dealing with anywhere from like one to maybe five or six fields, uh, you can build out this little bit of logic and, uh, and get this working. Hopefully this helps out some of you guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them uh, at the bottom of my uh, blog post. Thanks for your time, everybody.